So to understand those emotional motivators is really key. But getting really clear and super specific on your dream client is the most important thing that you can do to grow your business. You are listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Well, hello, hello. It's Tracy Matthews here of Thrive by Design. Welcome to episode number 82. Hey, I'm thrilled to be here today. As usual, it's been a busy beginning of the year, and let me tell you why. Every year in January, Robin and I like to host a free training, and then we open up our Laying the Foundation course for enrollment. This year, we'd established a completely brand new training that was a lot of work. We've been working on it about four or five months. It was one of the best that we ever did. We had about 8,000 people run through the training and about 4,000 people in the boot camp, which was really crazy. It was called the Jewelry Brand Makeover Boot Camp. And it was off the hook. I know a lot of you listening were probably part of the boot camp and had a blast. And it was just a really amazing experience. And I felt, you know, when you're like working on something for so hard and then it finally comes to life and you're like, oh, yes, we did it. And you're so excited about how it went and people loved it. Well, that's how I felt about boot camp. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of not only some of the top questions that we got, because I feel like whether you were in boot camp or not in boot camp, you might have some of these same questions. And then I also wanted to share with you some of the top aha moments. So this boot camp was all developed to help you really think about your brand from the ground up from everything from who you're selling to, why you're doing it, and what you're actually selling to getting your mindset in the right place and then creating this great platform to build demand and desire for your brand so that you can build this cycle of sharing and repeat customers so that you don't have to work so hard selling your jewelry. Sounds great, right? So it was a really great training. People got some amazing results and it was super fun to put on. So I wanted to share just a little bit about some of my favorite things about boot camp, and then also share some of your favorite things about boot camp, and then answer some of the top questions that got asked because we seem to get a lot of the same questions asked over and over and over again. So let's start by talking about some of my favorite parts. So one of the things that I really love whenever we host uh, an event like this or some sort of free challenge or training is the participation from you guys. That is what really makes this brilliant. Before we get started, I want to take a word from today's sponsor, Shopify. So a lot of you are trying to build jewelry businesses online. You want to build an e-commerce store. You want to get traffic to your website. You want to convert that traffic into sales. And I know that some of you are frustrated because you're just not having the results that you hope you would. Now, building an e-commerce business that's successful is not rocket science but it does require the right platform, which I think is really amazing. And that's one of the things that Shopify does so well. I love their integration. They have tons of different templates that you can use at all different price points. You can have them custom built. You can do it yourself, whatever feels right for you. But then at the end of the day, you can uh, add on a lot of these plugins that really help you build an e-commerce business. Things like abandoned cart sequences, things like upsells and cross-sells, suggested sells you might also like. They have really great plugins for abandoned cart sequences. There's just so much that you can do with a Shopify website. And, you know, we're always trying to bring you a good deal. So last year I was talking with the Shopify peeps and I negotiated a 10% discount for you guys, plus an extended free trial. So I wanted to hook you up with this because I really do believe that Shopify is one of the best e-commerce platforms out there. And I wanted to share with you a little bit more about how you can save 10% off of your monthly Shopify fees. Head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Shopify. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Shopify and check it out. All right, so let's dive in to today's episode. Okay, so to start, I really want to talk about aha moments. So this boot camp was insane and people came to these wonderful realizations. So some of the biggest ones, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of them here and I might quote some people specifically, just for lack of time or that we had a a lot of the same types of things. But I feel like some of the biggest aha moments were that people realized that they were trying to sell to everyone instead of one specific dream client. So the first training in boot camp, we really walked you through the who, what, and why of how to create a solid brand platform and how to speak 
to your perfect dream client. And I think so many people have these revelations like, oh my God, I didn't realize this before, but my dream client is actually my sister, you know, just personified or my dream client is already someone that I've worked with and I hadn't realized that I was trying to market to all these other people. So that was really amazing. In the first exercise in boot camp, we had everyone write down their cocktail line and people loved how it got them really thinking about their who, what, and why, and and how they were talking about their brand. Because I can't tell you how many times, I mean, I've been working on refining my cocktail line for years, and it doesn't always come out the same. Uh, It comes out quite differently, actually, in different situations. But how nailing down that cocktail line really helps you get people engaged in your brand just in normal, everyday settings which is great because a lot of us are going to be selling to people we know, to people outside of our network, to people, you know, connected to our network. So it's really great to be able to talk about that. So identifying uh, your dream client and then getting really comfortable about talking about yourself, two big aha moments that are deeply tied into what we spoke about in the first training. The next thing that people, I think one another realization that a lot of people came to was that they were trying to do too much or spreading themselves too thin instead of focusing on the right task. Now, I know this is a nebulous concept and it's a little bit broad, but at the end of the day, I think it's really important. You know, a lot of us focus our time on things that aren't really driving our business forward. And instead of doing the things that are actually going to get us the fastest, most efficient results, we get sidetracked on things like wasteful time on email, spending too much time on Facebook, doing things like, you know, little remedial things that aren't really important. And to be quite honest with you, I have a pile of notebooks on my desk right now. Actually, they're spread all over the floor and I record in my living room because I was trying to organize them. And it's not the most important thing that I need to do right now to move my business forward. So they're still sitting here. And I realize that it's not the most important thing to do. So I'm going to have to go focus on more important things like bringing you a podcast. So sometimes we have to let things go in order to move forward in the direction of our dreams. Um, I think another thing, speaking of dreams, that became a huge revelation was that people realized that they could actually have a business that they wanted. I know a lot of us face this fear like, is what I want really possible or can I really do this and how am I going to do this? And it was so amazing to see people come out the other side and just be like, oh my gosh, it is possible and I can do this. I'm going to take the steps right now. And they got so excited about moving forward. So it's really, really fun to see people overcoming those fears, working on their affirmations, getting to the next level, and really creating mantras that are going to sort of replace all this stuff that they get stuck in, all these fears that they get stuck in, the the daily sort of rigmarole that goes through your head when you say you're not good enough or you don't deserve it and all that stuff. So it was really, really wonderful. Some of the other aha moments were things like, even though I go multiple directions in my business or in my designs, you know, I can now see how they tie all together. And now I'm really clear on my who, what, and why, and why I actually started this business in the first place. So all of these things are really important to setting yourself up for success. So I think it's really great that you guys all dug in, those of you who joined us in boot camp to have these amazing revelations and aha moments in your business, because this is where growth starts to come, right? So we got a lot of questions. One of the first aha moments, like people were realizing who their dream client was, but people were still struggling about how to identify their dream clients and where to find them. So that's sort of a general question, but because it came up so much, I wanted to address it on today's podcast to talk a little bit more about how you can identify and find your dream client. So we have a very extensive course called the Dream Client Intensive (laughs) that we offer over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy. And in that course, we sort of walk you through the steps of defining your dream client. And when I was first starting out, everyone's like, who's your target market? Who's your target market? I know a lot of people think in terms of target market, which is a really broad range of people. It's not specific. It's big, broad. And what we want to do in order to nail down our dream client is to get really specific, to create a single individual avatar or like a fake person so that we know who we're marketing to. And it, this this avatar, this uh, dream client sort of informs all of the things that we do to market and sell our jewelry. It might inform the language that you use. It will inform where you're finding those people. It will also inform you know, what the type of jewelry that you design, you know, and maybe the jewelry defines who the dream client is, but it could also come the other way. You know, maybe you have a dream client in mind and you design for them. So it 
basically informs everything. It If you sell wholesale, it would inform the stores that you're trying to sell to. And the reason why this exercise is so important to get crystal clear, and we just gave you the tip of the iceberg in bootcamp, is because if you are trying to sell to everyone, you're really selling to no one. You're not getting specific enough. Those are words from my mentor Marie Forleo's mouth. And if you're not getting specific enough, all this time that you spend trying to build your business is wasted because you're not clear on who you're actually marketing to. So you do this by identifying like where they live, their income, what they do for a living. Are they married or not married? Do they have kids? What their lifestyle is a lot about? Do they have hobbies? What kind of music do they like? Like just really getting inside the head. But I think the most important things are understanding things like where they shop, who their style icons are, where they're hanging out online, and then getting really deep. Like, what are their biggest fears in relation to your jewelry? Are they someone who's really quality? Do they want to get something that's really unique and individual? Because for them, being like everyone else is a nightmare. I know for me, that's my dream client totally wants that. They want to be individuals. Or is it something else? You know, getting inside their heads and all these fears are really, really important. And it could be anything from, you know, wanting to stand out, or feeling like they're sinking in, and then you go to that deepest, darkest fear. Maybe it's that, that, like, as a child, they didn't stand out, so that's what they want. I mean, let's get serious, people. We're probably, we might not go that deep, but those kinds of things are really important to inform why someone would buy something. Or maybe they feel like, you know, the only way that they feel good about themselves is putting on a piece of jewelry. So to understand those emotional motivators is really key. But getting really clear and super specific on your dream client is the most important thing that you can do to grow your business. The second question that came up the most is how do I price my jewelry? You know, a lot of people talked about pricing. What's the markup? How much do I mark it up? You know, in my area, people aren't going to spend that much if I, you know, use a general pricing formula. Or how do I pay myself enough money and how do I incorporate my hourly wage into the price of my piece? So let's talk about the pricing first. We have a really great resource here that we've had for over a year called the Pricing Cheat Sheet over at Flourish and Thrive Academy. You can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash pricing cheat sheet to grab it. I'll also link it in the show notes so you can grab it there. But this cheat sheet walks you through some of the most basic formula of pricing, which is taking your cost of goods and labor and coming up with a wholesale price and then marking that up to a retail price. And, you know, the general markup would be marking the cost of goods and labor up by two and then marking it to 2.5 to retail. That's super basic. So grab the cheat sheet because that's going to tell you a lot more about that process. But you want to make sure that you're pricing stuff the right way. But the bigger thing is people are always asking, how much labor should I charge? Well, I think the really important thing that people don't remember, and I am a little bit outspoken on this philosophy, is that if you're trying to grow your jewelry business, and I think there are a few exceptions, like super fine jewelers, super fine makers, and potentially art jewelers. This is where there could be some gray area or like a fine line when it comes to this, what I'm about to say. But for most of us, a lot of what we can do can be outsourced to other people. And it's not saying that you have to outsource the work to other people. Yes, you can still make your jewelry, but you have to think from a consumer's perspective. If you're charging, like let's say you make wire wrap jewelry and you want to make $25 an hour, the fair market rate for wire wrap labor is not $25 an hour. It's probably closer to 15 in most markets, depending on where you're sourcing it. It could even be lower depending on where you're doing it. So you want to make sure that you're pricing based on labor costs, on actual labor costs that you would pay someone else to make it. Now, that doesn't mean that's what you pay yourself. You need to be thinking of yourself as the principal of your company. So you need to be paying yourself a salary, not a per hour rate which I think is a really huge distinction. And I talk about this all the time. I've done some podcasts on pricing as well. And I think it's a really important distinguishing factor. And it's the key to getting yourself out of maker mindset. Because if you want to have a business, you need to think like a business owner, an entrepreneur, a chief visionary officer, whatever you want to call yourself, instead of an hourly wage earner, because you are much more than that. You're not an hourly wage earner, even though you are doing something that might take a specific amount of hours to do. So I want you to reframe the way you think about that, download the pricing cheat sheet and check it out. So there's market rates for labor for every type of industry thing that you do. So if you're doing bench work or casting, all those things, there's a market rate for labor. So make sure that you're incorporating 
the fair market labor into the price of your goods? Really great question. We get that all the time. All right. So we had a lot of questions about how do you find resources and manufacturers? Now you guys know a couple weeks ago, I did a sourcing podcast. I believe that's episode 79. So go check that out. Tamara Schaffhauser and I did a really great episode all about sourcing. So make sure that you check it out. Episode number 79. And she talks about some hacks on how to find manufacturers and vendors. So Listen to that episode because she's going to go into a lot more depth on things that you should be looking at. But in addition to that, I think that people are really short-sighted. A lot of times when we live in a state, especially here in the United States and all over the world, there's going to be industry for jewelry making. You want to find where the industry is close to you. So I'm on the East Coast. There's industry in Rhode Island. There's industry in New York City where I live. Uh, When I lived in LA, there's a huge industry there. When I lived in San Francisco, there was industry there. In all the big cities, there's industry. So start local first and see if you can find or identify where the industry is. And then look to bigger industries. Like New York has a great, huge industry, tons of manufacturing here on a small and a little bit bigger scale. LA, San Francisco, Rhode Island for sure. But look inside your local area first and see if you can find people maybe on Craigslist or on a job posting site or an industry site to find help to help you either outsource that they can take it with them or manufacturing resources. And then most vendors can be probably found online or through networking through groups like Flourish and Thrive Academy, where we have in our Laying the Foundation course, we have a whole resources list and we all share resources in that group as well. So asking for referral, sourcing online, trying to, you know, find people depending on what it is. Like for instance, one year I was looking for a wax model maker in San Francisco. And I found that person just by posting a job listing on Craigslist. And I got a bunch of responses and that's how I found someone. Another way to find people to help you with production for manufacturing is to think about your local art schools. So if there's a jewelry program in a school close to you, oftentimes you can hire jewelry students to help you make jewelry for you. I've done this many times. Uh, Several of the people who worked for me came from jewelry programs and it's a really great way to help build your team if you want to have people either working in your office or working in their own studio to outsource to. So let's see, we had a lot of questions about how to improve writing and blogging techniques. What's interesting, I've done a couple of podcasts all about this, so we'll link those below. But I think writing really goes back to that dream client because you want to know who you're writing for. In boot camp, I interviewed Toby Miles, who took our Lane the Foundation course for the first time last year. She was just starting her business and made great headway with getting all of her branding together this last year. And now she's really ready to take off. And she has a really particular niche. And her dream client is someone who rides motorcycles because she is a girl who rides. And she got really specific in her product descriptions and what she was writing on her website to appeal to that person. So when you're writing, you really want to think in terms of who you're writing for and the audience. And that might make your writing a lot easier. In fact, I did a lot of work with writing. I took Marie Forleo's B-School, which was really amazing. And after I took that course years and years ago, when I was sending out my newsletters, people would reply to my newsletters and my blog posts and say, did you hire a branding expert? And it was just me understanding how to talk like myself to my audience who are my dream clients. So there's a lot of things that you can do. I'm going to link some of our writing podcasts and resources in the episode show notes. It's too much in depth to like really go in depth right here, but I wanted to just talk a little bit about that. So another question that kept coming up is what do you do when cash flow is in a pinch? How do you fund your business when you're not making a lot of money yet, or you're trying to get over a hump, or you're trying to get some samples developed, etc. So this is a great question because I think it's really interesting. And I think the first thing that people want to do is go to find investors, which I don't think is always the best choice. Because if you have an investor in your business, unless it's a close friend or family, which is always a good resource, you are going to have to report to them. And a lot of times investors don't want to invest in a company that's not making money yet. So I would encourage you to be think a little bit outside the box. You can do something like have a fundraiser. You can do a Kickstarter campaign or the like, like of that. You could do a GoFundMe campaign. All these things are great ways to sort of 
generate revenue so that you can get your sample line developed or invest money in your business, but then they're also getting something on the other side. So think outside the box here. I also like to think in terms of like, what do I already have and what can I sell right now to make some money right away? Because I think that's the most important thing. If you have some leftover inventory sitting around, this is a great opportunity for you to get it out the door, sell it to the people on your list or sell it to your friends and family, get some money coming in the door and use that to invest in your business. So I really encourage you to get resourceful. And if you've done something really resourceful, I would love to hear about it. So you can post it in the episode, on the episode show note, blog post comments, because I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you thought outside the box to fund your company and without getting an investor, because I don't think that that's necessarily the right option for most of us when we're first starting out. Another question that was asked quite a bit was how do I get more people on my website? Such a great question. And this is a very complicated question. So I'm going to sort of break it down for you. I think a lot of designers rely on or think that they need a lot of cold traffic to have a successful online business. And cold traffic is really just defined as people who don't know who you are, who've never really encountered your brand before, and they land on your website and then magically just buy, right? So that's great. We're always gonna be in need of cold traffic, but what they forget to realize is that the warm leads and the hot leads, the people who already know about your brand or comfortable with your brand, uh, or the people who've already bought before are really the ones who are going to buy a lot more than those cold leads. You might convert a cold lead here and there, but those hot and warm leads are the ones that are going to actually be the people who are buying. So the best way to get more traffic to your website is to build an email list and start emailing those people on a regular basis and getting them back to your website. Also rewarding loyalty programs for previous buyers, making them feel like a VIP, giving them special incentives to purchase on a regular basis, offer them new product regularly so they have something new to buy. This is huge. You know, when I was in the wholesale world, buyers would come to my booth all the time at the trade shows. And the first thing that they would say, what's new, what's new, what's new? Because people need new stuff to buy. And although you might have great bestsellers, you might have a great collection. If you're not bringing anything new into the assortment after people have already seen the older stuff that might still be selling well, then there's nothing new in their minds to buy. And even though your collection might be great and you've sold through it, if there's not something new, there's no incentive for them to take that next step. So Make sure that you're evolving your collection and doing at least two collections a year so those previous buyers have an opportunity to buy from you. So another thing that you could do to get traffic on your website, and this works for cold and warm leads, is to have a really lush social media strategy. Obviously, that's important. Be consistently posting on platforms like Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook to get people to your website. I think Instagram and Pinterest are probably a lot more important than Facebook, in my opinion, but they can all work. And Facebook actually works for me, especially when I'm posting on my personal page, because a lot of my network will share what I'm doing with other people. And I do have a huge client base of people who actually already know me, and they've become my friends over time. So don't discount that. I think it's still really important. Uh, But you want to leverage your business page as well. And Pinterest is a huge platform that can become viral over time if you get pinned on an influential pinners board. And you can also, you know, create your own viral pins by using rich pins and promoting your pins and getting more eyeballs on them, which is really important. And then the next thing that has worked really, really well for me that you guys need to remember to do is to blog frequently. And what this does is it helps improve your SEO. So the more you're updating your website, the search engines think that your website is relevant. So if you drop off for a serious long time and don't write anything, then those search engines are going to think your website is not important. So you want to keep posting at least one time a month. I sometimes struggle with this to this day, just because I'm really busy with Flourish and Thrive, but I really know the value of this because I get a lot of traffic to my site from the blog posts that I've written. And you want to make sure those blog posts are SEO friendly. So they're picking up the keyword terms of whatever your client might be searching about for that blog post. For instance, I have a blog post about rose cut diamonds that I wrote several years ago. And I get tons of inquiries all the time about rose cut diamond engagement rings. So it works. Trust me, people. So the final question I'm going to sort of address here is here is how do I find a sales rep But what I really think this question is, how do I get over my fear of sales? (laughs) And I say that because I think a lot of people are really afraid of selling their work. And it was something that came up over and over and over again. And so what they think is hiring someone to do it for them is the answer. And yes, sometimes that's the case. 
I had many sales reps in my wholesale business. I'm not opposed to hiring a sales rep again or someone who can do customer service and stuff for me. In fact, I'll probably be trying to find someone like that this year. But more importantly, I think people want to ditch the sales because they don't feel confident in sales and they're, they have this severe fear of rejection. And in reality, when your business is small and you're trying to get it to the next level, even when my business was bigger, having a sales team in-house was always way better than outsourcing to reps and trade shows. I think this is something, or reps and showrooms, excuse me, not trade shows. I think this is really important to bring up because you pay all this money for a rep or all this money for a showroom. And oftentimes they don't always have their best interest in you. Now, really good showrooms do, and there are many of them out there, but typically they're really competitive to get into. And you don't just want to get into a showroom just to get into a showroom. You want to get into the right showroom. Sort of like identifying your dream client. You want to make sure that it's the right fit. And in order to do that, you really need to get exposure for your brand on your own first. And so that takes us to sort of getting over the sphere of sales. So I love this one uh, designer. She was in there and she's like, oh my God, after video two, I can't believe it, but I was so terrified to reach out to this store that I really wanted to sell to. And I did, and I got an appointment with them and she was so afraid for so long and it left her in inaction. And she just took that step to ask for the sale and went for it and went for the, ask for the appointment actually. And then she went to go ask for the sale and she got the appointment and it wasn't that hard. I think we turn this into something huge in our minds. So I really encourage you to think about why you want to hire a sales rep and maybe reframe that and become your best sales rep. And we've heard a lot of stories about people who've gone through our laying the foundation course who end up saying that, you know, I think Allison was the one who said it. Allison Lafonboise said something along the lines of like, I became my best sales rep and I was, I had this vision of finding my best sales rep before the course started. And I became my best sales rep because I learned how to sell my work confidently and without fear. And you can all do that too. So we are running out of time. I'd like to keep these episodes around 30 minutes. So we're heading on that mark right now. So I think I might do these Q and A's maybe every month. We'll see. I kind of like it. So I wanted to just do this little recap of boot camp. It was super fun. Share some aha moments with you. Share some of the top questions that we kept getting. Cause I'm sure that if you, whether you participated in boot camp or you did not, that you might have some of these same questions as well. So I wanted to remind you to check out our sponsor, Shopify. If you're unsure or uncertain of your website platform or you're, you're looking to make a switch or you don't have a website yet, go head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Shopify, sign up for their free trial. And if you decide to continue with them, you'll get 10% off of Shopify's fee, which is really, really cool. We all need to save money in business. We're bootstrapping it here. So let's do this. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. As always, it's been a great pleasure. I talked about a lot of different things and a lot of different resources. So I'm going to have all those things linked over in the show notes. So you can check that out over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 82. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 82. Thanks so much for listening today. This is Tracy Matthews signing off until next time.